Hey, what's up everyone? This is Peter R. Newton, and today I'm going to show you how straightforward Unreal has made developing for the Gear VR using your Galaxy Note 4. So, some of the hiccups I've come across is just not having my OSIG on the device, uh, inside the field at the time of making the package. And so, to quickly go over that, we you have to make sure that you, of course, already have Unreal Engine 4.7 downloaded from the GitHub depot, and you've compiled and done everything that's necessary to have the editor run. Now, another thing you have to download is the Tegra Android development pack. You want to make sure to download this, install it, and what you will have after that is this window right here. This is a SDK manager and you can download the different build tools. Now these build tools allow you to build for the different versions of uh, Android, but if you of course want something, uh, if you want API that's more specific to that device, you uh, can go down there. But these are all you need to build to your devices. So you can click here and install those all once you have Integra installed. Now, if you need, just need help navigating to where this is located, it's right here, C, Navpack Android SDK, and we can navigate there really quickly, Navpack uh, SDK, and you see right there, you can just launch that application. And now once you have Unreal Engine, and Tegra Android Development Pack installed and you have the proper build tools updated. What you have to do is get your Note 4 now and connect it to your computer and also enable USB debugging for your Note 4 and that will allow you to give um, ADB or Android Development access to your device when it builds out uh, the packages. But what it will also do is list out your your Android device uh, ID. So when you go to developer Oculus and it asks for your device's ID, you can put it in here. So I'll show you quickly on how to get that in once you've already enabled uh, USB debugging for your Note 4. So once you have your device plugged in, you want to unlock it, bring up command prompt, and you can do ADB list devices, uh, ADB devices, and you'll see your device ID right there. And you, of course, mark, right click that, get it out, and paste it in here and download. Now you're going to get this Oculus SIG and with your device prefix, or I should say uh, suffixes at the end, um, you want to go to your source code for the build now. With that file in there, you want to cut that, go to engine, build, Android, Java, assets, and copy this into the uh, assets folder. And so when it goes to build the package for your phone, it will include this in the package. So when it goes to activate on your device, it allows it to run. And so that will stop me because it would, it would, uh, it wouldn't bring up anything, it wouldn't tell me to insert the device, or I should say gear into the device. It would just, um, no, nothing would come up actually. So now that you have all that installed, you have the access folder with your OSIG, you have the SDK installed, this is updated. You want to open Visual Studio now, of course, and bring up your project, uh, or actually just bring up the editor now and go to new projects. You want to make sure to go to the C++ tab. 
because that's re that's required for Gear VR. And choose a project um, of your choice at this time. Now they they might have blueprint uh, compatibility later on, but right now I believe it's C plus uh, plus for the gear. And you want to go to vehicle advanced, or I did just because I like this uh, example. Um, no stutter content. You want to do scale 3D so it turns off full HDR and mobile tablet. And let's just name this um, my gear VR car. And we'll create that project. Okay, so now that you have your new project created and you see it here populated under games, you have it built, everything's up to date. Let's launch it and start the project again. And this time we're going to make some additional changes to the plugins and also some of the settings to configure it for the Android. Now once the project is up, we can make a few changes. So let's go to edit, project, and we want to go down to Android SDK. Make sure that you have your locations set up accordingly. And you also have this set the latest and Android 19 for the NDK. So let's go to Android now and you'll see this is not configured. So let's configure this now. I would just quickly put something here to say uh, Real Games Gear VR and in here what we want to set is configure Android manifest for deployment to gear great now others have suggested that you put in some extra parameters in here, for example, camera. We want permission to, for the camera, so Android permission camera. And that's more in reference to this, the pass-through camera that you can do with the Gear VR. And there's also some other uh, things that you can add to the manifest if you want to go ahead and do that. But I will just leave it at this. Um, the last thing you want to do is let's close this now and we go to Window Plugins and head mounted displays. Let's turn on the Gear VR and optionally you can turn off the Oculus. Um, it's, it's totally okay to turn it off. So now that you've done that, we can hit restart. All right, so now that you have it reopened, we can go and check to make sure that plugins is Accepted, and that's all accepted. Let's go to projects. Android's case done, and also this is populated. Now, let's go to package project. You can do all, or if you know your specific uh, platform, mine's ATC. I created a new folder on my desktop, just named it builds. I throw everything in there. And now we can just check and make sure everything's going through. Oh, actually, one thing. Let's do one thing. Go to projects, packaging, and you see where it says full rebuild? If you want faster iterations, turn off full rebuild. And that would just compile the code and repackage everything a lot quicker. So let's go back to ATC. Now, for the first time, it's of course going to pack everything for the next time. If you just don't, if you just want to say, uh, change the pawn just a little, you want to 
add a new camera. It, it will just update the code and repackage everything. It, it won't actually, um, actually I should say, it shouldn't repackage, it will copy over the old packages that were created before and use the new code. So let's uh, check this. Looks like it's going through. And do, 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 do. Project built. Do, do. That's going to go to the phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll just, we'll be back after this is done. All right, and now that we have our package built, you want to plug in your Android device and unlock it. Let me bring um, the screen up. And let's, um, let me show you what's going to go on here. We can navigate to our build folder and mine is in the ATC and this was just built. And so we're going to install my gear. It's going to launch this command window right here. <clears throat> and it's going to find my device and begin installing on my device. So in here, you would actually see a notification pop up saying it's being installed. Oh, yes. There you go, you see Lookout doing its thing. And there you go. So we have that, we have that now. And when you go to launch your game, it should give you this to open this application, insert your device into gear. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm not sure what's going to happen when it's recording and it's also over TeamViewer. So, all right, let's check it out. All right, this is interesting. Oh, let me uh, turn my remote on, actually. You, you can see it plays just fine. Frame rate uh, is pretty decent. Uh, let me go inside, actually. So you look in the sky. Okay. Oh, this is actually my game. Actually, let's go back. Um, the build you're seeing now is actually the build I made earlier, and I made it show the FPS and uh, did some small changes, but the outcome is the same. Let me actually just close this, and I'll restart the right application. There you go. You notice there's uh, some latency. There's even latency for, latency for me too when I'm controlling the uh, the car, and it's not it's not the remote. I found out it, it is the game, so it's chugging a little, and so that's why I loaded my build originally. So let's go back to that. FPS should pick up. All right. So it's it's not really 
the FPS is not that much higher, but the response to the remote and everything else is reduced dramatically in comparison. As you can tell, I have a lot more control over the car. And that's it, guys. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this. I just want to thank all the guys who made this possible because this is astonishing how straightforward this has become. You know, and now us as developers can just go straight into the action and create the games we need to. Alright, thank you guys. Peace.